Well, garden plans are underway across the Lower Mainland, and this year you might want to consider helping butterflies and bees when you decide what to plant, or better yet, become a butterfly ranger. Winnie Ho is with the David Suzuki Foundation, and Tara Moreau is with the UBC Botanical Garden. They join us now for more. Hi there. Hi. Hi, Jason. It's great to see you both. Uh, first of all, Winnie, what exactly is a butterfly ranger? So we ask uh, citizens uh, in the Lower Mainland to plan for wild pollinators, like butterflies and wild bees. So when they do that, we give them a lawn sign like this, and so uh, that more people know that you, you should be planting for wild pollinators. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Um, because pollinators actually uh, help us to produce food for us. But at the same time, we know that because of climate change and a, a lot of the other environmental reasons, that they are actually facing a lot of challenges. So this is part of what the foundation believes that we're all um, nature is a uh, solution is a part of nature for us so citizens can help in any way that they want so planting for the wild pollinators especially planting the uh, pesticide free native plants will help them tremendously when you say citizens who comes forward who volunteers for the, uh, this um, so for me um, in Vancouver I host three cities so it's Richmond Vancouver and the district of North Vancouver and so this year we already finished the recruitment period but at the same time we're really excited because we have 86 fabulous citizens um, across the these three cities uh, basically I'm saying everybody so we have young people like high school students college students uh, grandmother daughters and this year we're really excited because um, we've been running this program in the Lower Mainland for four years. We've never had so many men wanting to be a butterfly ranger. So I'm looking at at least 15 to 20 men who will be joining us this season. Uh, Tara, tell us a little bit about uh, your involvement. Uh, well, I've been working with Winnie for the last year and a half trying to advance the citizen science element uh, to the programming. So we're using uh, uh, iNaturalist, which is a tool residents can download on their phone and to take pictures of butterflies, to take pictures of plants so that we can be recording what actually is coming into the gardens and getting some baseline data of butterfly populations here in Metro Vancouver. Citizen scientist sounds uh, pretty exciting. What, what does it entail exactly? Citizen science is an exciting new field that's been emerging that engages citizens in helping to collect data and connecting citizens to scientists uh, so that we can be um, better getting baseline assessments and understandings of what populations and citizen science can help with astronomy. There's people who are discovering new, <laughs> new solar systems and new stars. Uh, they are helping with birding and butterflies. And, and so there's a lot of ways for citizens to be helping to collect data that helps advance science. Mm -hmm. Winnie mentioned it a bit, but uh, what do we know about the, the health levels of butterflies and bees within our ecosystem today? Well, from a scientific point of view, we, we don't have incredibly great baseline data of the populations that live here. Uh, there's been a lot of evidence that populations are declining. Globally, we know we're facing a biodiversity crisis. One in five plants face extinction. And so locally, this is really more important now than ever to baseline what population levels are, what species are here, and uh, monitoring their abundance over time and trying to figure out how do gardens really support uh, those populations and are they supporting butterflies or bees? When it comes to that data collection though and given the the intricacies and the complexities behind it, are there any concerns with getting someone like me to take part in it all? Well this is why we're using the new tools. So iNaturalist can help identify butterflies and then they're verified by scientists. Uh, so you can take a picture of a butterfly and it says we think it's a, a swallowtail and scientists will verify that. And so we can evaluate the data and there's research grade data, there's different grades of data that mm. we can pull from when we do some scientific uh, analysis. Yeah, so I can also chime in that because um, with collecting that kind of data, we kind of started last year with with our 2019 ranger. So we have experimenting with that. And so there is a BIMBY project on the iNaturalist that we're actually asking all our rangers to collect data. So we have some base uh, information and observation and so that is why coming into this year with Tara helping us and putting real science into those data that we have collected and we'll be collecting more this year. That is really exciting. Did you say BIMBY? Yes. What does that mean? So that is uh, butterflies in my backyard in BC, yeah. <laughs> Why is it important to get the community involved with this? Um, because um, we know that uh, we do a lot to the environment 
uh, and we also benefit a lot. But at the same time, citizens need to know that we can be a solution as well. So this is what Butterfly Rangers have been doing over the last four years that we've started the national project. So it's not just in Vancouver or the Lower Mainland, but also in Toronto, Montreal and Victoria. So these guys are actually joining us, donating their time, and they plan and they organize and they get their communities together and spread the word. Spring, of course, just around the, the corner here. The sign-up period is over, but what can people yeah. do to, to still get involved? So the on-the-ground sign-up is done, um, but at the same time, we also have the national online project that's actually uh, being activated end of the week this week. So rangers, um, if you want to join an online community and join with the other rangers across the country, you should be watching for that link that's coming up this weekend. Tara, why, yeah. why is this important? Why should we care about the ecosystem? Well, I think we are part of our natural ecosystem. Sometimes we forget that. Uh, and in the context of climate change, and I think there's a lot of eco-anxiety. People are really feeling um, stressed by, by the data. And so I think gardening, getting out, uh, working in your community, talking to your neighbors uh, to support biodiversity is a really great way to get started. For people locally, there's a great resource. It's called the Grow Green Gra Guide with Metro Vancouver. It supports people in just getting um, gardens going in their backyards to support biodiversity. Uh, I think it's really important from a connectivity from people point of view. We know that gardens improve our health and well-being and, and so getting out there with other people and trying mm. to do something around climate action I think is, is really important. It's great to see the both of you today. Thank you so Thank much you so for much. joining us. Thank Thanks. you for having us. Mm -hmm.